Hello everybody and happy 2022. I hope you all had a really lovely Christmas. Before Christmas I actually recorded a Christmas collaboration video but um, unfortunately we haven't had time to edit the videos and get those live yet so you are going to get a Christmas collab video coming sometime in the month of January. But the purpose of this video is to talk about the Lunar X and V visibility throughout 2022. The Lunar X and V are just two of loads of different Claire Obscure effects that are visible on the Moon. So they're just transient effects that are caused by sunlight kind of hitting certain regions on the Moon and creating these shapes. And the X and the V are just my favourite two to observe and they're visible around the same time. Now you can see from this photograph that I took in 2020 that the lunar X is about a quarter of the way up from the bottom, um, very close to the terminator, and the lunar V is about halfway up. And that's really important to keep in mind because these are very small so if you're just looking at these with a pair of binoculars you may find it quite difficult unless they're pretty big binoculars. But I'm just going to zoom in now and show you a couple of pictures side by side of the X and the V that I did and using a 5X Barlow on our small refractor so it got us in really close to those two regions and they are just so so pretty I love them so much. So the Lunar X is actually definitely at its most impressive when it's slightly in the shadow side of the moon and it's basically caused by light illuminating the rims of the craters Blanchinus, Lacale and Purbeck and just when the light hits at that right angle you get this really very noticeable X shape there that really stands out best as I said when it is on the kind of shadow side. The V is slightly different, the V becomes visible a little bit sooner than the X but because the it's kind of like a raised area within um, Mare Vaporum, so it kind of really stands out. And this one is actually the crater Urquhart that is being illuminated, and, and it really has that very characteristic V pattern. And once the lunar terminator moves a little bit further across as well, you can actually see a secondary V underneath that one. Um, so, But yeah, when you see them kind of wide field, you really do get that sense that they're a, a, a very kind of solid X shape and a solid V shape. But when you actually get up close, you can see that the rims of those craters have craterlets taken out of them. And they're not actually as smooth as you might think. <laughs> um, but they are just, I don't know, there's something so captivating about them. And Definitely you will need at least a good pair of binoculars, but they're definitely easier to spot if you do have a telescope. And what's really interesting to do is to look at them just before they're due to appear. And then you can see them kind of start to show up on the shadow side and then they get brighter and brighter. And then as the lunar terminator moves across, you can still see the X and the V, but they're no longer kind of surrounded by shadow. They have some kind of illumination within the background of them as well. A few years ago I actually spent a considerable amount of time and walked many steps going up and down the garden to basically take videos of the lunar surface before the lunar X appeared and continue to take videos every 15 minutes for about six and a half hours. Um, genuinely I couldn't walk for a really long time after doing that but I did that and managed to turn it into a kind of time-lapse video that I'll show you now. So I've cropped the video so that first of all we can just look at the lunar X and then I'll show you the lunar V and I just think it's amazing when we look at the moon like this and you can see See the boundary between light and shade moving within a fairly short amount of time actually and I think if you do go out and try to find these um, th this clear obscure effect or any others it's worth just observing them over a long period of time because seeing the way that they change relative to the landscape and as the sun angle changes is just really really fun to do and that's the same with any lunar crater to be honest when you can see it changing like that so this video now will show you how that terminator changes so this began in daylight so that that's the video really quickly this is the video again slowed down so you can see how that x just starts to punch through from the shadow side and as the terminator moves it's then surrounded by light around it and similarly with the v when it first becomes visible because you've got that mari with the darker kind of basalt in the background it really kind of pops 
So here is a table that lists the times that the lunar X, like it's a kind of approximate start time for when the X appears. And I use the Lunar Terminator visualization tool from NASA. And basically you can download this table and the accompanying blog on my blog page and you can download a PDF and print this out. And within that is a link to the, the NASA moon tool where you can actually look at the moon phases and librations. And that is the tool that I use to figure out what time these are visible. Once the X and the V become visible, they will be visible for a few hours after that time. Now, when you first glance at this table, you think, well, why can't I see it every month from the UK? And the reason for that is because the lunar phases and the lunar cycle don't correspond completely with the calendar month. So at a glance, it might seem that you should see them every month because they do occur every month. But from any one location, you may only get a few times a year where you can see it. But something important to bear in mind, if you get the X and the V on a rising moon, it's going to be harder to see them. If you get it on a daytime moon that is rising or setting, they're going to be a lot harder to see. So although, yes, these four months that I've highlighted here, no, actually five months I've highlighted here, Technically, the Lunar X will be visible from the UK, but they will be challenging to actually observe if you're not an experienced observer of them. That doesn't mean you shouldn't try because it's always really rewarding doing anything on a daytime moon because it is just that bit harder to see. But I would say with a daytime moon, trying to spot these with binoculars is going to be really, really difficult. The main problem with the setting moon is that the moon is going to be very low and that can make it quite difficult to get photos photographs and to observe because you're looking through more atmosphere and all of those sorts of things. So these are the months where it will be challenging, but technically they are visible. There are a lot of months where it's just not visible from here in the UK, but I've put the start and end times or the start times rather in UT or GMT. So if you don't live in the UK, you can have a look down those times and figure out whether the moon will be above the horizon from your location. So this is kind of a universal table in terms of the start times of the X and the V, but the moonrise and set times are very much centered around the UK and whether the visibility is, is there. Now, because of libration, you may notice that the percentage that the moon is illuminated varies from month to month as well, and it's anywhere from 42 to 55 percent. So that is why they happen at a different time every month. For us here in the UK, the best conditions, if we have a clear sky, are going to be on the months where the moon is already above the horizon and we have a dark sky when the X and the V are going to be visible. So that is February, April and June. But please do try to observe them on the other months. One thing I will also say is that in the past when I've used this um, NASA tool to figure out the time that the X becomes visible, I sometimes find it takes about 45 minutes after that start time before it is really clearly visible for me. So start having a look beforehand as I said and then just keep observing and then you'll see it appear. Also make sure you are looking on the right date because sometimes it's visible in the early hours of the morning so don't get caught out by thinking that it's the following night when it's actually the early hours of that day rather than the night so yeah just kind of bear that in mind. But yeah, this table will show you the start times, which is applicable for everybody around the world. So hopefully you'll find that useful. As I said, this is something that you can download now. Um, I publish these times on my Google Blogger every year, have done for a long time. But this time I thought I'd make a YouTube video about it and also make it downloadable so you can print out this table if you want to. There's also a, a kind of bit of information about the X and the V and how they form and stuff like that you may not be interested in that at all so I've put the data table first on the blog so you can ignore all the the rest of the writing if that's not something that you're interested in so hopefully you'll find that helpful I've got it all kind of in the description box below so you'll be able to go and download the blog and find the tool that I'm talking about and the link to download the blog in PDF form where you can then print it out now as I said before and I showed you in that little time-lapse video sometimes the X and the V are still visible even when the Terminator is moved over and the background is still visible 
they're not as striking definitely they look better when they're surrounded by shadow and that is definitely when they're at their brightest but if you look at this picture here you can see if you know where to look then the x and the v are very much apparent within a few hours though they just disappear because the obviously those craters are then being illuminated by a higher sun angle and that just wipes away all of the the lovely stuff that you see on the lunar landscape when you've got a high sun angle all the morphology just disappears so if you know where to look you will still see them kind of a good few hours after the the prime time but once you get to a day or two afterwards you can actually find it really difficult to even find the craters that cause this one thing that i did because most of you know that i I love sketching and I got photographs of the lunar X region from two different dates where it was kind of not as illuminated and then when the sun had kind of moved over a little bit and created sketches of it and in pastel form it really does just show you the difference it makes having that background shadow so in the sketch on the left you can see that is when the X is you know still surrounded by shadowy stuff it's really apparent even though there are little craterlets within it then below that you've got the crater Walter and that is completely in shadow apart from the high sides of the rim but on the right hand side the sun terminator has moved over a little bit further and now the X has almost been obliterated by the background craters but now you've got some illumination within the crater Walter and you can see the central peak hitting the sun and also some of those lovely crater shadows being cast across the crater floor so when you watch these over a period of time they are the kinds of things that you can see start to appear and just watching a crater sunrise over any crater is absolutely wonderful but to see it over the x and the v is just awesome now the lunar x and the v are not the only clair obscure effects there are many others and um, from memory you've got the eyes of clavius the face in albategnius and there are loads of them to look for and many of them within the Lunar 100 observing challenge as well so I will also put a link to the Wikipedia page where it lists some of the, the kind of mo more well-known Claire Obscure effects so once you've had a chance to look for the X and the V you can then go off and see which other ones you might be able to find so I hope you found the video useful the blog link as I said is in the description box if you know anybody that might find this useful please do feel free to share it i take the time to find this stuff to help people so i'm happy for you to share it with anybody that you think will get some benefit from it so good luck and i hope you get to see the x and the v this year see you in my next video